All right, hello everybody. We're gonna be going on a Vietnam lecture number, I think it's four. Um, picking up from where we left, left off. Uh, sorry for the noise. My kids are running around here in the basement, playing on their little jump house and superhero costume, so that's what that noise is. All right, so anyway, getting through this. We should be right about here. Uh, here we go. All right, so one of the things I really didn't get into a whole lot of in terms of just t discussing and talking about was, you know, as the years started increasing, so from the 50s, 60s, Kennedy, Linda B. Johnson, again, Linda B. Johnson escalates the war. Um, one thing we didn't talk about, and I think this, this graphic really tells it all, if you look at 1962, that was still under JFK, we had a roughly, about, roughly around 11,000 troops in Vietnam. 63, again, JFK, 16,000 troops. 64, at this point, Kennedy's dead. Um, he, he was killed. Um, LBJ, 23,000. Well, look what's happened in 1965, 66, 67, 68. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of troops. And I think I alluded to this in one of the assignments, um, that most of the troops that were there were drafted. They weren't volunteers. Roughly about a third, third to a quarter uh, were volunteers. The rest were drafted, were drafted individuals. And what's interesting is who was being drafted. Um... You have the young. The average age of a Vietnam soldier was 19 years old. Uh, so freshly, right out of high school. Um, whereas World War II, the average age was 21. Uh, so these sold, these troops were freshly, right out of high, sc out of high school. And they mostly came from poor working class families. Um, why? Because you had a lot of exemptions. There were exemptions for the draft. If you were able to pay money, um, that, was, that, that could have been the ability for you to get out of the draft. Now, who's able to pay money is going to be the rich uh, and the wealthy. Um, married children, uh, college kids had abilities to um, to go play for a minute. I'm, I'm the side. I'm not, I'll put on you in a minute. Um, college age kids were also, if you were in college, you also had some ability to get exempted uh, from the draft as well. So many of these poor these poor kids from poor families weren't able to, to get out of the draft. They were drafted. They were going. Um, so, you know, one of the questions I think I alluded to in the Ed Puzzle is what was the difference between World War II and Vietnam? Well, World War II, you mostly had most Americans that had support of the war. Uh, why? Because you were fighting against Hitler, you're fighting against Mussolini, you're fighting against all these dictators that are killing millions of people. Vietnam, you're going in to help save a farmer. So, there were a lot of families, especially when you start sending hundreds of thousands of troops, that was, you know, the kid's son, or a husband, a father, whatever. You're sending them, you know, in danger in a war. And the question began, well, why? Why are we fighting this war? Why are we sending hundreds of thousands of troops into Vietnam? This is not the same as World War II. Again, that was the perspective of some individuals. So you see, as the war increased, you see some, you know, again, the one thing that, that this war was different compared to other ones was in terms of the media. Guys, there were nightly broadcasts on the world news about live footage of the Vietnam War. First war put on uh, TV, um, and you're seeing bodies all over the place. You're seeing American soldiers wounded. Uh, you know, you guys go back to this slide, you're seeing casualties here. 1966, 6,000 troops killed. 67, 11,000 troops. 68, 16,000 troops. 69, 11,000 troops that were killed. So you're starting to see more and more, you know, young kids um, who are dying over there. Um, and the questions began to, to ramp up. Um, and just really being able to see it, really kind of put war in perspective. Uh, and it, think about it as a father and mother. You're watching TV and you're wondering, is that my kid? Is that my, my son over there? Um, this became difficult for a lot of Americans to really grasp with. And that's ultimately what the TV is going to do. Let's see some more pictures here. All right, so you guys watch an Ed Puzzle on this. The Tet Offensive. This was on January of 1968. Um, Lyndon B. Johnson is still the president. So what is the Tet? The Tet is the Vietnamese New Year. They, they do this as like a spring, sign of springs coming in. Uh, they worship their ancestors, pay respect to their traditions, and typically, uh, on this in years past, typically on the day of the Tet, there was no fighting. There was a ceasefire. Both sides agreed to not go to basically stop fighting. However, as we talked about, one of the big one of the, one of the big tactics of the Vietnamese were surprise. Pick the time, pick the location. So they thought the Americans weren't going to expect an attack on the day of the Tet. Years past, ceasefire. Okay. So this was um, 
this was a surprise attack they did in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, as you guys saw in the video, where literally hundreds of locations all throughout South Vietnam were hit at the exact same time. Over 84,000 North Vietnamese and Viet Cong troops together coordinated this attack to hit all over Vietnam. 100 cities attacked, 12 military bases were attacked all over Vietnam. And we're like, we're caught off guard. Holy crap, we're being we're being attacked. We didn't think the Vietnamese had this really in them. And again, this is broadcast all over TV. Um, and one thing that was interesting is most Americans start thinking, how in the heck, if we're winning the war, think back to the Ed Puzzle, Lyndon B. Johnson kept saying all along, the war's going to be over soon. It's only a matter of time. If we're going to win the war, and we're winning the war, how is it, how is it the Vietnamese, how are they able to coordinate this large of an attack? How is that possible if we're winning? Two, how are they able to get, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go to the next slide here. How are they able to attack throughout this whole swath of area here? How are they able to infiltrate way down in the south here? How are they able to do it? Here's a DMZ right here. Here's the, 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 the border. How are they able to get way down here? How is that possible? Um, Chase. Just give me a minute, buddy. I'll, I will get to you. I promise. Go. Um, so there, Saigon is located way down here. So again, Americans begin questioning. How is the enemy able, if the border is right here, how are they able to get way down here? So all these questions begin to amp up. This is all over the media. Now again, granted, yes. Were the Americans able to get on their feet? Absolutely. It took a couple days. But the questions began to, to, to really ramp up. Is LBJ, President Johnson, being truthful? Are we really winning? Will it be over in a matter of time? And that became very clear. The answer was no. He can't be trusted. He may have been lying. And the war is not going to be over anytime soon if they're able to infiltrate way down here. And 84,000 troops all at one time. So General Westmoreland, all along, again, after this all kind of starts settling down, he claims this is a U.S. victory. But again, as I said, this is going to shake the American confidence in our leaders, General Westmoreland, Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, and are we really secure? Is South Vietnam really secure? Um, so after this, why is the Tet Offensive so important? It's because criticism and opposition to the war is significantly going to increase. Here's a picture of D.C. You see this here, um, where uh, people are going to be uh, dramatically start increasing their opposition to the war. So, 1968. At this point, Lyndon B. Johnson is not very popular. As you guys read, you guys already did one of the assignments. Uh, 1968, uh, LBJ decides to not run for re-election. He's a broken man. He knows deep, deep down inside. He got himself into a mess in Vietnam, basically having no no chance. He's exhausted. Um, he's overwhelmingly his, his, his own friends, his own party sort of turn on him. Um, and he starts realizing he's gotten too deep into, too deep into Vietnam. He thought listening to his military generals, he thought technology and bombing was going to work. But when he started sending more and more and more troops, he got so far in that where he couldn't get out. Now, why didn't he just pull the troops? He couldn't just pull the troops because, think about this, it's still Cold War. If you pull the troops out of the little Vietnam, you're making the, you're making the U.S. look weak against the Soviet Union. Um, so you can't just pull out. So he got himself into a mess that he just couldn't uh, get out of. So he uh, chooses to not run for re-election. He's extremely unpopular, as I said. Um, honestly, he, wouldn't got, he probably would not have got re-elected anyway, even if he decided to even run. So a uh, couple of things that happened in 1968. Robert Kennedy was killed by Saran Saran. So that's two Kennedys. This is JFK's brother. Uh, he was killed. Uh, and then Richard, Richard Nixon, he's the, one of the other candidates um, who's going to run for presidency in 1968. Um, he has a secret plan. He campaigns that, he, that he's going to end the war. He doesn't really give him much of details, but he ends up winning the election. So President Nixon again wins the 1968 election, um, and he's going to increase the bombing rates. He starts pulling troops slowly back home. If you go back to that graphic, you'll see that uh, he believes that if you increase more bombing, you'll end the war quicker. That's the hopes. So he implements this plan called Vietnamization. Vocab term, you know that. Vietnamization, he's going to gradually start bringing troops back home starting in 1969. All right, so that is it uh, for the lecture notes. Uh, I did want to go back to and show you guys really quick. If you guys go to, let's see here, uh, Google Classroom. Just 
to make sure we're on the same page with your assignments this week. So you will see this. Sorry. All right, so here's um, lesson seven. I have a task in order what you need. Watch the video lecture, which is three. Uh, complete the Ed Puzzle, such and destroy. You'll see that. It's one of the assignments. It's, you won't find it on this assignment. You'll find it below it. So you'll see an actual assignment pop up, Ed Puzzle. It's like we have always done. Nothing, nothing changed. Then you do a, a flip grid. Same thing. I'm going to go to this really quick. Flip grid, you'll see here. It's a flip grid lesson. It'll show up beneath the uh, lesson seven. You're going to read this. Um, read the LBJ confession tapes. You're going to open this up. You're going to read it. Uh, and you're gonna answer this question. What do the what do the revealed tapes show about President Johnson's true feelings of Vietnam? Why do you think he didn't just pull troops out of the Vietnam War instead of increasing American troops? So you click on Flipgrid. You might just you might you might just sign in under your Google information. So I'll, I'll click on it and show you kind of what I see. Log in with Google. Okay, I'll do that. You should see this, and you have to click on this plus sign. You'll be able to make a little video answering that question right here. So what do the revealed tapes show about President Johnson's true feelings about Vietnam? Why do you think he didn't just pull troops out of Vietnam? Click on this plus sign, and you record your response through the video. So you'll be able to explain it, and then you'll be able to submit it. So I just want to go over that with you. That With that, um, I'm going to cross out of here, uh, go back to 7. There's going to be... I'm on the wrong one. But anyway, no big deal. Here it is. Ah, where's it at? There we go. All right, sorry about that little snafu there. So here it is. So you'll follow through this, watch the video lecture, which you're watching now. Complete that certificate. Keep on working on your Vietnam project, you and your partner or just yourself. Make sure that you guys are going on that. And that's really your only task for the unit. Again, let me know if you have any questions. Send me an email. Uh, I have it on me. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.